molars of rolling process and uh, michael first we need to uh, draw the diagram what happened yeah so so basically to start this process we need to make a diagram okay in the lecture notes you can see the diagram already right so let us draw the diagram again okay it is uh, important for us to redraw that diagram okay so i am going to zoom this diagram from our lecture okay from our book it is a very nice diagram and let me try to draw diagram part uh, b okay so let us start with uh, rolling process as you know that in rolling process we in flat rolling process we have got two rolling mills right so let's make two rolling mills first okay so we have got a rolling uh, mill number 1 or a roller this is called a roller and then i've got roller number 2 okay so uh, these are two rollers then i want to roll my steel or roll my blank or roll my material right so initially what happens that a thicker piece i have got a thicker piece okay that thicker piece is going to be rolled into a thinner piece okay so this thicker piece has a thickness of initial thickness of t not t means thickness not means initial so this is an initial thickness t not okay now after it goes through the rolling process it is deformed okay so it is deformed into a smaller thickness so before rolling the thickness is higher after rolling the thickness is lower and this thickness is called tf or final thickness t f or the final thickness so initially my roll thickness was very high and then after going through the rolling process the thickness become very high now to roll this material my roller should be moving so my roller is basically moving so my roller is moving at a certain speed or at a certain velocity okay and that velocity is called roll velocity this velocity is called roll velocity r o l l v e l o c i t y okay and this velocity is denoted by v r subscript r roll velocity <laughs> so both of my rollers are rolling with a certain velocity v r <clears throat> now uh, i have these rolls and these rolls have uh, their center point and a radius these rolls are circular or cylindrical if i want to imagine these roll in three dimension then these rolls are cylindrical okay so uh, since these rolls are cylindrical so they have got a radius so that radius is called roll radius okay and that roll radius is given by capital r capital r is equals to roll radius uh let me put this outside okay so this capital r is denoted as roll radius now my roll and my material is in contact with the uh work piece okay and this is the the my roller and work piece are in contact in this region only this region is the region only where my roller and workpiece are in contact okay from here to here they are in contact 
before this point there is no contact and after this point there is no contact so i am going to highlight this as yellow okay and i am going to make this dimension okay this dimension is contact length and contact length l capital l this is equals to contact length because my role is in in contact for a certain amount of length only uh so if you see this figure as well if i show you this figure as well okay so i have got my role so i have got this role okay this is the role initially the material enters with a thickness of initial thickness t not and then uh, it is higher and then after it goes through this rolling process the thickness is reduced to t final and you can see there is a width also the width of the material okay in three dimension we have got thickness and we have got uh, width also so this width is also initially w not and after the rolling process the width will also increase so this becomes wf final now this roll is in contact with my uh, strip or with my work piece at a certain length l so this is the contact length okay so the initial uh, zone is called entry zone then we enter the roll gap which is called the uh, contact length area and then we approach the exit zone okay so when the roll touches my work piece when the roll touches my work piece friction also starts happening whenever you touch something you can feel that there is a friction if you are going to put your hand on the table and you are trying to slide your hand on the table you will feel friction in a similar way the roll also when it enters and when it touches the moment it touches the uh, roller it experiences friction force and it ex experiences friction force until the end of the contact length so that contact length is very important for calculating Uh, for usage in friction coefficient okay what is friction fr coefficient friction is basically the resistance of a body uh, for movement when it is in contact with something so uh, now that we have made the diagram okay let's uh, make some parameters parameter number 1 is uh, parameter number 1 is called maximum possible draft number 1 is called maximum maximum possible draft maximum possible draft is basically the difference between it is denoted by d max and this is the difference between the uh, initial uh, thickness sorry yeah so it is the difference between the initial thickness and the final thickness uh, this is not max sorry this is only d d is equals to initial thickness t not minus final thickness tf and because the final thickness is always lower than the initial thickness so it will always be a positive value so this is called draft and this the unit of draft in usually in millimeters this is the unit remember in the exam never forget to write the units so draft is the difference between initial thickness and final thickness okay now there is second thing called so i will put the figure uh, so that you guys can see the figure as well Uh, so i will make the figure smaller and put it here okay now what is uh, draft is sometimes expressed as reduction okay reduction is expressed by r 
and it is the ratio of draft D to initial thickness. That's it. So this is also uh, in, uh, it is just a ratio, okay? So there is no unit. Okay, because it is only a ratio. So basically sometimes I can tell that my reduction ratio is 10%, 20%. So sometimes we can uh, refer to this reduction ratio as draft divided by initial thickness. Uh, now, as I said, the fluid mechanics uh, principle will apply. Here in this diagram, if I show you this diagram, okay. Uh, if you see the material which is entering, the amount of material which is entering inside and the amount of material which is exiting outside, okay. So this is, let's say, mass in and this is mass out. You can see that the amount of material entering and material, amount of material exiting is same, okay? So this is basically uh, an example of conservation of mass, okay? So when we say that the amount of mass entering inside and when we say that the amount of mass entering outside is same, then we call it conservation of mass. So by applying conservation of mass, So the mass entering inside a system is equals to the mass and exiting out of the system. Okay. Now mass is equals to uh, density multiplied by volume. So density in volume in is equals to density out volume out. Okay, now since we know that the density of the material is same, density of material is same because the fluid is incompressible. Because the fluid is incompressible, as I said earlier, so the density is uh, same. So since the density is same, we can cancel each other out. So density cancel each other out. So we are left with only volume inside is equals to volume outside. So this is the conservation of mass. Now uh, my sheet or my material, okay. Okay, it has a thickness, initial thickness, T, uh, let's say uh, T naught, okay. Then I have got uh, the width also of the material. So this is my width. This is W naught, and this is the length of my material, L naught, okay? So volume formula is, volume is equals to thickness into width into length, okay? So my formula becomes volume in is equals to T naught multiplied by W naught multiply by L naught is equals to uh, thickness, final thickness, multiply by final width, multiply by final length. So this is the conservation of mass. And by this, we can find the different dimensions of our material. Where T is thickness, W is width and LAN is L is length. 
all are in millimeters okay so this is uh, the conservation of uh, volume so just now we have done draft okay number one we have done draft number two we have done reduction and number three we have done uh, volume so this is volume <clears throat> so I will move now now this figure in this figure okay if you can see here and the role actually has this contact here and here okay so it contacts from here until here okay so we have got an angle as well okay so that angle is uh, defined as uh, just a contact angle or simple angle angle okay so the role works contact the work along and along an arc defined by an angle okay we have already have seen uh, that vr is the roll speed okay this speed is greater when entering uh, this the speed uh, is greater than entering the speed of work v naught but less than the exiting speed vf uh, the roll speed vr is greater than the entering speed of work but less than the exit speed of uh, okay so what we are saying is if you see this diagram uh, this diagram okay they are saying is that when the role enters this area okay sorry when the workpiece enter this area okay the speed of the workpiece which enter in the entry zone okay Okay, this speed, let's say is V naught, okay, V naught, okay. So V R, the roll speed is faster than V naught, but it is lesser than V F. Because when the volume increases, the amount of material pushes and go faster. So when the amount of material pushes and go faster, it, it becomes higher than the roll speed. But uh, when the material wants to enter, when the, a lot of material wants to enter the role, okay, then its speed is uh, lesser, okay. It is, is it is lesser. Uh, this rolls uh, this speed of the workpiece is lesser than the roll speed, but this speed exiting uh, workpiece uh, speed is faster than the roll speed. This, if you can see a video, then you can imagine this more in a more better way. Later, I will share uh, perhaps a video or something. There is one point along the arc where the work velocity is equals to the roll velocity. This is called no slip point or neutral point. So there is a point here, okay. And there is an imaginary point, okay. So let's say there is an imaginary point here. So let me remove this, okay. And I go back. So in this area, there is an imaginary point, okay. At this point, no slip occurs. Okay, if I am going to show you guys here, at this point, no slip occurs. Basically, when you're going to put your role inside, uh, basically, when you're going to put your workpiece inside a role, what happens is that the workpiece is going inside slipping also. Due to friction, there is some uh, perhaps uh, grip, and but there is some slip. There is a grip and there is slip. If you are going to put your hand on a table, your hand due to friction coefficient is still moving forward and there is slipping also. If you push your hand, then it is going to slip also and grip also due to friction. So both slipping and gripping are happening at the same time simultaneously. But there is a point where there is complete, uh, there is no slip condition in the rolling process and in that no slip condition what happens is the roll speed vr becomes equal 
there is one point along the arc where the work velocity is equals to the work velocity v w. Okay, this is called nose flip point. So this is just for information. It will not be useful uh, later on. However, because there is slipping occurring, so we need to measure the amount of slipping which occurs. Okay, so if I go here, number four. So amount of slip. How to calculate the amount of slip which occurs? Amount of slip which occurs during the rolling process is denoted by s small s small s is equals to final velocity minus roll velocity whole divided by roll velocity okay where vr is equals to roll velocity and this s slip has no unit it is only a ratio of how much slipping is occurring during the rolling process. <clears throat> the unit of velocity is meter per second. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Now that we know about the draft, now we know about the reduction, now that we know about the conservation of mass and conservation of volume, now we know about the slip. Let's move on to the stress and strain which I was talking about previously. Okay, so in the rolling process, we have got uh, stress, true strain, once again, it is a measure of delta L over L, but in true strain, we put uh, Ln as well. So true strain, how much your a work piece is going through strain is denoted by epsilon. Okay. So true strain is denoted by epsilon. And this is equals to ln. Okay. Into T naught initial thickness. Whole divided by final thickness. Remember this formula. And this formula also has no unit. <clears throat> Let's move on to average flow stress. So basically for the, when your roll goes through, sorry, when your work piece goes through the rolling process, it, you know, a lot of force is applied through the rolls. So when the force is applied on the certain area of the roll, then it experiences some stresses. And those stresses are called average flow stresses. And due to those stresses, strain occurs. So that strain is called true strain. So the stresses in our rolling process is given by a very different kind of notation, uh, YF, YF bar. This is called average flow stress. This is equals to K, which is strength coefficient multiplied by strain epsilon to the power n whole divided by one plus n. Okay. What is this? Yf is the flow stress. Okay. So Yf is the average flow stress. What is K? K is the strength coefficient. Strength. <clears throat> Kf is the strength coefficient. Epsilon is the strain, true strain. Okay. And N is the strain hardening exponent. Okay, so this formula is a little bit complicated. 
the average flow stress is given by k which is the strength coefficient multiplied by the strain which is the true strain to the power of n which is strain hardening coefficient whole divided by 1 plus strain hardening coefficient the strength coefficient k has the unit of megapascal mpa okay n does not have any unit no unit okay strain also has no unit and average flow stress has also unit of mega pascal okay now the question is what is k and what is n so k and n are material properties material properties to get the value of k or n we need to refer to material properties table material properties table 3.4 so if in the exam I am going to give you a numerical, then I will also provide you this table. This table will be provided in the exam. This table is important and it will be given in the exam. What is this table? This is the uh, table. Uh, just a second. Table 3.4, it is given in your slides also. Uh, yes, so this is the table. Okay. So if you can see in this table, the value of K, which is the strength coefficient, and N, which is the strain hardening exponent is given. Okay for each different material so if i tell you that what is the strength coefficient of a high carbon steel so this is high c it is written high c means high carbon high carbon steel has a strength coefficient in megapascal of 850 okay and high carbon steel has a strain hardening exponent of 0 0.15 so using tables you can get the value of strength coefficient and strength coefficient and strain hardening exponent okay so this table will be given to you okay so now i know how to calculate the stress now i know how to calculate the strain okay now i know how to get the values of strain coefficient and strain coefficient so now uh, what should i do okay using stress also i can calculate in the reverse manner the force also okay so in the next uh, slide in your uh, uh, you can see so if i go to number seven okay number seven is talking about friction as I said to you guys that during the rolling process, we get friction also. And due to friction, we can calculate the maximum possible draft. Remember, draft is the uh, basically the difference between the initial thickness and the final thickness. But how much can I reduce my material? If I put, let's say, one meter of roll, one meter of workpiece, how much maximum I can reduce it after the rolling process. So maximum draft is basically how much amount of material thickness I can reduce. And that we can derive with the help of friction coefficient. So maximum MX and MUM, maximum draft possible, okay, 
it is dependent on the friction coefficient okay so maximum draft d max is equals to mu square multiplied by r and this is the formula <coughs> what is mu square mu square is friction coefficient <clears throat> mu square is the friction coefficient and capital R is the roll radius. <clears throat> In millimeter. Friction coefficient also has no unit. So friction coefficient is basically the net opposing force you feel when a body is in motion and is in contact with another body. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, I know how much maximum I can reduce if I know the friction coefficient between the roll and my workpiece. Okay. Now I know the uh, maximum possible draft. Let's move on to the estimated roll force. Okay. So I have got my roller, okay, roller number one, roller number two, and my material is inside, right? Okay, to compress them, to reduce the thickness, I need to apply some force also, force, roll force F. Okay, that is very important. So to apply some roll force, okay, if you see here uh, in this uh, picture, there is actually a force that I need to apply in order to reduce the thickness. To reduce the thickness, I need to apply a roll force on both rollers, roller number one and roller number two. Only then my thickness will be reduced. Okay. So what is the amount of roll force that I should apply? Okay. So the amount of roll force or estimated roll force <clears throat> So estimated roll force, we will calculate with the help of the average flow stress because from stress, we can get the amount of value of force. So at an estimated roll force is denoted by a capital F. Okay. And this is equals to flow stress. Okay. Y into F bar multiplied by the width of my, uh, uh, my workpiece multiplied by the contact length okay the contact length which we saw here here if you see in this uh, diagram okay, this area was the contact length this was the contact length area okay so to we need contact length for our uh, force I know the formula for uh, average flow stress. I know the formula for the width. I know the width of my material, but I don't know the formula for contact length. So the formula for contact length, these formulas will be given, but you should know the terminologies, what is contact length, where it is situated. Uh, if I calculate the contact length, then I can put it in the force formula. If I know the stress uh, or flow stress, then I can put in the flow formula. So you should know where to put which value. These formulas will be given, but the challenge is that where to put which value, okay? So contact length is L is equals to under root roll radius multiplied by initial thickness minus final thickness. Now, to, to apply the force, okay? So in order to apply the force on my rollers, 
uh, if I want to apply force on these rollers, okay, I need to apply torque also. Only with by rotating this in this direction, okay, we need a torque. We need a motor. I need a motor uh, so that I can basically, uh, let's say this is my cylinder, okay, or these are my rollers. Then I need to attach them with a motor or something. Okay, and this motor is going to rotate these rollers. So to, to rotate these rollers, I need some amount of torque. Okay, torque is the amount of force per unit uh, which is applied for the distance. So to apply torque, okay, the formula for torque is torque for each roll. T capital is equals to 0 0.5 times the force, uh, the estimated roll force multiplied by the contact length. This 0 0.5 has been determined experimentally. Okay, this has been determined experimentally. It is an estimation or assumption. Okay. Now to apply torque, I need to apply power on the motors. Okay. So I need to apply power on my motors. I need to supply power so that it gives torque. When it gives torque, then it gives average estimated uh, roll force. When it gives estimated roll force on a certain area, then I get the flow stress. When I get the flow stress, then I can reduce my thickness from initial to final and then I can get my maximum possible draft. Okay, so this is the reverse order. First, we have a roll. We apply power through motor. That power is going to generate torque. That torque is going to generate the roll, estimated roll force. That roll force is going to create a stress on my roller. Oh, sorry, stress on my workpiece. Due to the stress on my workpiece, strain is created due to strain uh, creation there is a reduction in the thickness or there is change in dimensions due to change in dimension i get the maximum possible or simply possible draft that i can get okay so this is the reverse flow of our process so power required uh, to drive two rolls Uh, yeah, this P is equal to 2 pi into N into the estimated roll force into the contact length. What is N? N is the rotational speed. Rotational speed. of the roll in RPM. What is RPM? RPM is revolution per minute. How much one revolution per minute? How many revolution it takes in one minute actually? Revolution per minute. Okay. F is the estimated roll force and L is the contact length. The unit of power is usually in watts. <clears throat> so these are 11 uh, major formulas that are required to solve our numericals for the rolling process. Okay, so if I go up a little bit, let's just take a brief look at what we have learned so far. So basically, 
to solve today's class, we required uh, the use of fluid mechanics, assumption of incompressible flow fluid, okay, where the density does not changes with respect to uh, the distance or time. Then we have got solid mechanics principle regarding stress and strain, true stress and uh, average flow strain. Then we go to the rolling process, okay. We made a diagram, okay, and then we know that the maximum possible draft is the initial thickness minus the final thickness. Uh, then we go for the reduction. Reduction is basically a ratio of the draft to the initial thickness, so it does not have any unit. Then we go down and we apply the conservation of mass, which means that the material which is entering in the roll and the material which is exiting the roll, they are same, they have the same mass. Since uh, so the mass is same, so the density is same, but the volume is different because the material initially is, has more thick, but when it goes out, uh, the volume is same also, but the dimensions change actually. So thicker become thinner, uh, less wider becomes more wider, less length become more length. So basically it expands at the expense of a decrease in thickness. So basically we came up with this uh, conservation uh, formula. After this, we uh, went through the concept of uh, true strain, okay, and average flow stress, okay. Uh, for average flow stress, uh, we have the formula Yf is equal to stress constant, uh, stress strength coefficient divided by uh, strain, okay, true strain, and the strength coefficient uh, and uh, what you call n uh, strain hardening exponent can be obtained from uh, the table, okay? The table will be given to you in the exam. After that, we went through the friction, okay? How to calculate maximum draft from friction, okay? Uh, later, later on, we went through what is the amount of force that the role apply. So how to calculate this force? Uh, force equals to the amount of stress multiplied by the area. This is the area actually, stress multiplied by area. So stress is equals to force per unit area so force is equals to stress multiplied by area, okay? So this is how we got uh, this formula. Then we have the contact length, then we went to the torque, and then we went to the power, okay? We have got our numerical number one, okay? So today I will show you how to solve the numericals, okay? And I hope and I suggest, uh, just a second. Uh, so today we, I will show you how to solve numericals in exams, okay? It is very important to follow this procedure. If you're going to follow this procedure for all kinds of subjects, then the lecturers will be very happy and they will give you marks for given data calculation, given formula, okay? So let us read uh, this numerical first, okay? A series of cold rolling operations are to be used to reduce the thickness of a plate from 50 millimeter down to 25 uh, millimeter okay so the initial thickness and the final thickness is given okay so in a reversing to high mill okay what is reversing to high mill reversing to high mill is actually same as a normal roller okay so i have got this roller i've got this roller and then my material is coming and reducing so it is a reversing to high end mill so no, no difference. So what happens is that uh, <clears throat> a series of rolling operations are to be used to reduce the thickness of a plate from 50 millimeter initial thickness to final thickness Tf equals to 25 millimeter in a reversing to high mill. Roll diameter capital R is equal to 700 millimeter, okay? <clears throat> and the coefficient of friction between the rolls and the work is equal to 0 0.15. The specification is that the draft is to be equal on each pass. Okay. So each pass, so I am what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pass number one, pass number two, pass number three, something like that, so that I need to reduce my thickness again and again and again. Okay. 
because 50 millimeter to 25 millimeter is too much thickness reduction so what i need to, i need to do is based on friction provision i need to calculate the maximum draft uh, so determine the number of passes required in draft for each pass okay so let's write down what is the given formula sorry what is given in this uh, numerical okay <clears throat> So heading number one should be always when you're going to solve the numericals, heading number one is given data, okay? Two marks already for this one, given data. <clears throat> so what is given? The initial uh, and the final thickness. So T naught is equals to 50 millimeters. Then the final thickness is TF this is equals to <clears throat> sorry 25 millimeters then and the roll diameter or capital r is given is equals to 700 millimeters okay the friction coefficient mu this is called uh, i think mu m e w Greek letter mu, friction coefficient mu, this is given as 0 0.15. And remember, friction coefficient has no unit. Now, what is to be required? Minimum number of passes required. Okay. So, uh, minimum number of passes, uh, what was the formula? <clears throat> Uh, let's go back. Okay, so there is no number of minimum number of passes formula. <clears throat> so we are going to just uh, use our common sense. Okay. So minimum number of passes required. So we write this minimum number of passes this is unknown and what is number draft per pass draft for each pass so draft per each pass okay is unknown now the problem is so this is the given data so you already get three out of three already if you write this okay now the problem is that this is my initial thickness 50 okay but what is happening is that i want my final thickness to be 25 okay now there is a formula called maximum graph this will tell us how much maximum i can reduce in one pass okay so the maximum draft formula uh, okay is d max okay first i want to know that in one pass in one pass this is pass number one how much i can reduce from 50 to how much let's say 45 or something so once i know that based on the maximum draft formula i can reduce only this much amount okay then I can calculate how much total I can reduce the amount. Okay, so let's let's just start. Let's just write the given formula first. Given formulas. Okay, so then my given formula is that I've got two formulas. One is called uh, D max maximum draft, which is mu square r. Okay, and number two is. Uh, Uh, the draft itself, the normal draft is equals to T naught minus T final. Okay, so this is my current. Uh, this is my current uh, formula. So you got three out of three again. Okay, so this is the solution. Numerical one given data, given formulas, then we move to solution. Okay. 
so first let's find d max d max is equals to mu square r mu is 0 0.15 multiplied by r what is uh, r is 350 uh, sorry the roll diameter yeah diameter was given i made a mistake in the question roll diameter is given not the roll radius okay so this is roll diameter. I need to convert roll diameter into roll radius. So roll radius is equals to 700 divided by 2 is equals to 350 mm. Okay, so this is the roll radius. Okay, so I am go back again. Mu square into R. R is the roll radius. R roll radius is 350 mm. Okay. So my answer D max is equals to 7.875 millimeter. This is D max 7.85 millimeter. This is the maximum amount of thickness that I can reduce in one pass. Okay, remember D max is maximum amount of thickness that I can reduce in one pass. So if I've got my roller and I've got this friction coefficient 0 0.15 and roll radius of 350 mm okay and i have got this material okay which has a 50 mm uh, thickness then in one pass okay in one pass i can i can reduce the thickness only to 50 minus 7.85 7.875 which will be maybe 42 point something so in one pass, I can reduce my thickness, initial thickness from 50 to 42 something. But my target is how much? 25 millimeter. I want to reduce my thickness to 25 millimeter. So what I need to do, I need to put this 42, uh, this one, this 42 something again into the roller. So I need to put this 42 again in my roller. 42 something okay and when i put this 42 then again it will be reduced by the amount of 42 minus 7.875 it means that my maximum amount of thickness that these rollers can reduce is 7.875 this is called maximum draft okay so this is pass number one then this is pass number two okay now i need to go again and do pass number three okay so i need to do again and again this passes so that i can get my uh, thickness of 25 mm okay so how to calculate that how many passes should i do okay so to calculate the how many number of passes i should do it's very easy its formula is minimum number of passes Of passes is equals to T naught minus TF whole divided by D max. Okay, so this is equals to 50 minus minus 25. My target thickness whole divided by D max is 7.875 millimeter. Okay. So my number of passes becomes 3.17. Okay, my answer is minimum number of passes is 3.17. But is it possible to have 3.17 passes? No, because we have one solid pass, right? One solid pass. Then we have two solid pass. Then we have third solid pass. Then how to have 0 0.17 pass? The remaining 0 0.17 pass cannot. 
so we assume that 3.17 is equals to minimum four passes are required it means i need minimum four number of passes okay so how much should be the thickness that i should reduce in each pass so that my final thickness is 25 target is now my target is 50 mm reduced to 25 mm okay and my target is to do it four number of passes this is my target i need to reduce 50 millimeter into 25 millimeter okay in four number of passes okay so how to do that how so how much should be each pass how should i how much should i thickness remove in each pass so that is equals to means draft per pass so the amount of thickness that i should reduce in each pass d is equals to 50 minus 25 whole divided by 4 so this is equals to 6.25 millimeter okay so i have four pass p1 p2 p3 and p4 okay initial is 50 mm my final should be 25 mm okay so in each pass i should reduce 6.25 mm so my answer is uh, 6.250 minus 6.25 equals to 43.75 so this is 43.75 then in pass number two i will reduce 43.75 minus 6.25 again okay so it will be 37.25 something then again 37.25 minus 6.25 and then some xx value i will reduce uh, minus again 6.25 so my final will be 25 mm so this is my answer this 6.25 i have four passes and in each pass i reduce 6.25 mm so that i get a thickness reduction from 50 to 25 mm okay so this is the uh, simple answer for this numerical Uh, so I will go back here so that you can repeat this, so write this down, okay. Okay, so we will proceed to next numerical now. Okay, so let's move to numerical number two. Okay, so 
in numerical number two, okay, a single pass rolling operation, single pass simple means now this one is not multiple pass, okay. Previous operation was multiple pass rolling operation in which we will reduce the thickness when first pass, second pass, third pass, fourth pass. And this one is a single pass operation. So a single pass rolling operation reduces a 20 millimeter thick plate. Initial thickness 20 millimeter to 18 millimeter is the final thickness. Okay. The starting plate is 200 millimeter wide. So initial width is given is 200 millimeter. Roll radius is equals to 250 millimeter. Okay, so this time they have given us the roll radius. Previous numerical, they gave us the roll diameter. It was confusing. This numerical, they gave us the roll radius. So no need to divide it by two. So roll radius is 250 millimeter. Rotational speed is 12 revolution per minute. The work material has a strength coefficient K is equals to 600 megapascal and a strain hardening exponent n is equals to 0 0.22 determine the roll force roll torque power so very simple this one so let us quickly solve this and then i will wrap up the class <clears throat> so <clears throat> we move to numerical number two solution number one is given data So what is given is single pass rolling machine to use a 20 millimeter thick plate. So initial thickness T naught is equals to 20 millimeter. Okay. And then we have a final <coughs> thickness uh, TF is equals to 18 mm. Okay. Then the starting plate width given. So W uh, not is given as 200 millimeter okay then the roll radius capital R is equals to 250 millimeters and the rotational speed RPM so N is equals to 12 rpm or revolution per minute the work has a strength coefficient k is equals to 600 megapascal and the strain hardening coefficient n is equals to 0 0.22 so this is the given data what do we need to find? Number one is the roll force. So force required is unknown. Number two is the roll torque. So torque is also unknown. And number three, power required is unknown. So this is the given data. So three out of 10 marks already, three out of three marks already, if you write this. <clears throat> then we move to uh, applied formulas so the formulas will be given but you need to put what is the applied formulas okay so already as you can see it's given as uh, first thing is we need to calculate uh, so I will just copy paste all of them so t is equals to 0 0.5 5 f in 12 and power is equals to 2 pi n into f into l and then what is force force is equals to y average flow stress multiplied by width multiplied by contact length then stress flow stress is equals to uh, stress coefficient into strain to the power strain coefficient whole divided by one plus uh, strain hardening co co exponent n okay and how to calculate strain strain is equals to ln uh, t naught over t final 
and then how to call the contact length is equals to under root r t not minus t f okay so this is the given formula so this one is three out of three already so out of 10 marks six marks achieve already <clears throat> Now that we have done the given data and then we have done the applied formulas, we move to uh, solution. You can write solution, you can write calculation up to you. So we need to first uh, calculate uh, the contact length, okay? So length is equals to under root R T naught minus T F. So the length is equals to under root uh, T naught minus T L. So it's 250 millimeter given the roll radius multiplied by 20 multiplied by 18. So the contact length comes out to be equals to 0 0.02236 uh, meter. Initially it was millimeter 22.36 millimeter. So I convert millimeter into meter. One meter is equals to 1000 millimeter. Anyway, so this is my answer for contact length. Now I know the contact length, I want to calculate the strain. Okay, so strain epsilon is equals to ln t uh, not over tf. So this is equals to ln 20 whole divided by 18. So this comes out to be 0 0.1054, okay? Now I know the contact length, I know the strain. So now I can calculate uh, flow stress. For flow stress, yf bar is equals to uh, k, k is 600 multiply by uh, epsilon strain is uh, 0 0.1054 to the power strain exp uh, hardening exponent to the power 0 0.22 whole divided by 1 plus n so 1 plus 0 0.22 so my strain uh, sorry my rolling uh, sorry flow stress comes out to be 300 mega pascals so now i know my uh, rolling uh, flow stress i can calculate rolling force f f is equals to uh, y f bar multiplied by width multiplied by length so this is equals to 300 uh, multiplied by mega pascal multiplied by the width was uh 20 millimeter so width was how much 20 uh, width was 200 millimeter so 200 whole divided by 1000 to convert into meter okay multiply by the length length is equals to 0 0.02236 okay so my rolling force f comes out to be 1.3 uh, it comes out to be 1.34 into 10 to the power 6 newton so i can also write it in mega newton 1.34 into uh, sorry mega newton so 1.34 mega newton Okay, remember one mega newton is equals to 10 to power 6 newton. Okay. 
so this is my answer of force i know the stress i know the strain i know the force now i can calculate torque okay so what is torque t is equals to 2 multiplied by force multiplied by length sorry Oops, sorry uh, 0 0.5 okay good good very good so t is equals to 0 0.5 multiplied by uh, 1.34 into 10 to the power 6 multiplied by 0 0.02236 so my torque comes out to be 14.99 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 uh, newton meter okay torque from a uh, unit is newton meter now 1 10 to the power 3 newton is equals to 1 kilo newton so my torque becomes 114.99 kilo newton dot meter <coughs> okay now we move to part c power okay power formula is p is equals to 2 pi n into f into l once again so since the number of revolution is 12 revolution per minute okay we need to convert this revolution per um, minute into revolution per second okay so to convert it into second Uh, n becomes 12 uh, revolution per minute okay, we need to convert it into second so uh, we have one minute is equals to 60 second okay so minute minute cancel so n is equals to 12 over 60 revolution per seconds okay so power is equals to 2 into pi into 12 whole divided by 60 uh, multiplied by the torque which is 1.34 into 10 to the power 6 newton multiplied by 0 0.0 Two two three six. So my power should come out to be thirty seven point six five into ten to the power three watt. So ten to the power three watt is equals to one kilowatt. So power becomes thirty seven point six five kilowatt. <clears throat> so student this is the uh, answer so power also determine torque also determine and force also determine so these were the numericals for our uh, rolling process these two uh, i hope you guys can practice these two numericals uh, very well okay and hopefully something similar might come in the exam uh, using the similar format. So uh, any questions uh, students for today's uh, class, then no problem. Otherwise, thank you for listening and I will see you guys in the next class on Thursday uh, afternoon.
न्यूटन मीटर वन फोर एट नाइन न्यूटन मीटर इज एक्सेप्टेबल या करेक्ट टॉक इज वन फोर नाइन टू इज एक्सेप्टेबल नो प्रॉब्लम लेट से करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ टॉर्क इज वन फोर नाइन 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 न्यूटन मीटर राइट बट योर आंसर इज कमिंग टॉर्क इक्वल्स टू वन फोर यू नो वन टू थ्री न्यूटन मीटर सो इट इज आल्सो करेक्ट okay doesn't matter if a very big change then no problem small change then no problem